All right, happy Sabbath, everyone. We had two wonderful renditions, amen? Praise the Lord for those songs, amen? And one of the things I do admire about just, you know, our church service is just the simplicity of it, you know? And Charles Spurgeon once said that simplicity is an akin to revelation. And that simplicity is an akin to profundity. And as we near the end of time, God, we do serve a simple God, you know. And God is trying to simplify our lives, our dress habits, our work habits, our eating habits. God wants to simplify our lives. And he said just because he only used ABC doesn't mean he doesn't know XYZ. And so we thank God for those two simple but profound songs by Sister Bates. We want to welcome our online viewers, whether you're viewing us local or international, we say happy Sabbath and we say welcome. Hope and pray that you have been blessed thus far by the service. And to those who are here, we say welcome. Do we all have our study guides? All right, we're going to have a word of prayer and move right into our study. Let us, let us pray. O thou in whose presence my soul take delight, on whom in affliction I call, my song through the day and my comfort by night, my God, my salvation, my all. Loving Father in heaven, we are here once more, not for mere formality or mere curiosity, but dear Lord, we see that the day is almost over and the sun is about to set on civilization. And Father, we still have not yet been reflecting Christ's lovely image. And we're here this morning because we desperately need a change in name and a change in nature. And so we pray that grant through this morning study it will be a tool in your hands to work that great change whereby we can be fitted for translation. May you watch over us, we pray. May no evil befall us while we're in this edifice. And we will be very mindful to give you all the praise and all the honor. These we ask with the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. All right, we are continuing our series um, on Legion. And even though we're on lesson number seven, we have actually gone through 14 lessons. Um, Legion for we are many, and our study this morning, our subject matter is entitled Oppression and Possession. We're about halfway through this series. Um, and again, I want to highlight the fact that if you have not yet, you can get your copy of uh, Christian Grenell's book, William Grenell's book rather, The Christian Incomplete Armor. It's available on YouTube. You can get it, audio, wonderful book on Ephesians chapter 6, um, 7, as we look at this on um, the armor. And um, we'll be using this book extensively as we focus on um, defensive warfare. You know, we have learned, um, even in the sports world, that sports teams are now spending millions in defensive players. Before it was offensive, but they're realizing that a, that a good offense is the best defense. And that in the closing hour of the game, defense is what that wins the game. Amen. So this book helps us. It gives us strategies in regards to defensive warfare as we look at how we can best protect ourselves from demonic possession and our families. Our thematic text for this series is Mark chapter 5, verse 9. And, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, my name is what? Legion, for we are many. And this text does speak to spiritual warfare. It is real, friends. It is real. And the Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers and darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And because of this, he says now in Second Corinthians 10 that the, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Now, each lesson 
we are building. So we do repeat and we do enlarge. Now, your study guys, please read now. Your study guide says now, for too long. For too long, the work of demons has been dismissed by many as a curious practice in heathen cultures. It has not been considered as a problem which invades lives, homes, churches, and nations. As you previously learned, demons are an organized force of powers against which believers wrestle. Ephesians 6.12 Demons are the agents through which Satan works to accomplish his purposes in this world. My friends, we have covered thus far that as we near the end of time, it is Satan's plan to make us believe he does not really exist. And then when we talk about demons, it is a figment of our imagination. Far from it. Demons are real. The article says, please read now. If you are... If you are to wage effective warfare, you must learn how to deal with demonic powers that oppress or possess us. There are people all about you who are tormented, troubled, and even possessed by the powers of darkness known as demons, but they are ignorant of the realities. This chapter represents guidelines for ministering to those affected by de demonic powers. You know, in, in 1 Peter 2.21, Peter said that Jesus left us an example by which we can follow. And again, we assert and avow that Jesus is the only demon tamer. Amen? He is the one that demons respond to, to, right? And so through his ministry, you're going to find that Jesus did more deliverance than anything else always casting out demons for those three and a half years now we're going to move right into our study we're filling in the blanks for those who are here the first time christian number one says now does the scripture differentiate between demonic oppression and demonic possession the answer is yes now i'm going to give you two texts acts chapter 10 38 we're going to qualify them the apostle paul writes now about jesus how god anointed jesus with nazareth with the holy ghost with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed with devils, for God was with him. And if God is with us, what he did we can do, amen? But the scriptures allude to demon oppression. Then we find in Acts chapter 16, verse 16, and the other text, the Bible says, Now, and it came to pass, as we went to pray, a certain damsel that was not just oppressed, but she was what? Possessed with a spirit of divination. So the Bible does support the concepts of demonic oppression and demonic possession. Now, not everyone in the world is possessed, but everyone is oppressed. Are you with me? Now, the things that they have in common, that the cause is Satan. And the solution is Jesus. And if we are not possessed, then friends, we are oppressed. There are no exemptions, are you with me, from these two concepts. Again, not everybody is possessed, but we are all oppressed. Now, let's break it down. Question two says now, now what is demonic oppression? If we were to get, what is it? Now, I'm going to give you some text that will kind of set the stage for this, this concept now. Acts 10.38, the Bible says again, healing those who were oppressed with devils right now in isaiah 30 verse 21 isaiah says now and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye what now isaiah is making a reference to the holy spirit giving guidance and directions and directive to the people of god now in the great controversy there is legalities now if the holy ghost is able to speak to us then demons are able to do the same because if it was that the fact that only the holy ghost can speak to us the devil would say lord it's not fair i never had a chance to tempt them and so while you will hear a voice say this is the way uh walk ye in it you will hear voices also inspiring us to do wrong are you with me now one more text now um, John 10, 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So again, if, 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 if God's people are able to hear his voice, his foot, then it would be unfair for, for us not to hear the devil's voice. 
Because again, in the great controversy, there has to be legalities. And there are, there are rules of engagement. Now, we are told now, and again, we've covered this in great controversy. She says, um, well, I kind of, let me read this one. Well, let me read this one. It's kind of back and front, right? She says, now many give heed to their suggestions, demons, while they suppose themselves to be following the dictates of their own one. So this text, of the quote, avows the fact that demons do speak to people. Demons do inspire people. The Holy Ghost speaks to us. The Holy Ghost inspires us. As we hear the voice of God, we also hear the voice of the devil. And Jesus says, the voice of the stranger, they will not follow his people, right? Now, again, now, now this is what demon, demonic oppression is now. And it, it, it's kind of summed up in this quotation. And this is in Mind, Character, and Personality, book two, two books to get, um, page four, three, two. She says, there are thoughts and feelings suggested and aroused by Satan that annoy, harass even the best of men. But if they are not cherished, if they are repulsed as hateful, the soul is not contaminated with guilt, nor and no other is defiled by their influence. So friends, we can be sitting in church Worshipping God and a nasty, lewd, sensual thought just rush across your mind and say, where the world I came from? You know, sometimes you see me shaking my head. It's not fits. It's not the spirit. I said, where did it come from? Get in, Satan. I, I'm, 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 I'm repulsing it. And what it is, it's almost like, you know, for those ladies who've, who have broken somebody's heart and you have this, 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 this estranged boyfriend, he just can't get, get over it. And he just keeps on harassing you. He shows up on the job, at the park. And everywhere you are, he's there. He keeps on texting you until you have to get a, a restraining order. That's what the devil is, friends. He does not give up. He keeps on harassing and molesting, and he keeps on oppressing us. Are you with me? Then she says again in Desire of Ages now, she says, not in your handout, no, some, she says now, never does one, you can write it down though, never does one leave the ranks of evil for the service of God without encountering the assaults of Satan. He's always on our back suggesting that we had made the wrong choices. He wants us back. So demonic oppression is just Satan harassing us, bombarding us with his thoughts, arousing feelings. He's like a ginger fly. You, can't, you just can't shake them. Are you with me? As someone's put it this way now, we, can, we cannot stop the birds from flying over our heads. But we can tell them making a what? A nest. So bad thoughts will not leave you alone, friends. It will not leave you until the day you die. You will still be harassed, oppressed by the devil. We can choose if we retain, if we act upon these thoughts. As a matter of fact now, so this is what we're going now. We're, what it is now, please read, evil spirits can what? Evil spirits can oppress people. Uh -huh. To oppress means to bear down. Yes. Come against uh -huh. or bind from the outside. All right. This oppression is accomplished by evil spirits in various ways. Uh -huh. They cause depression, yes. create negative circumstances, and insert wrong thoughts into the mind, such as thoughts of suicide, uh -huh. immorality, uh -huh. belief, fear, restlessness, and the inability to reason or listen to others. This oppression. Again, we have to constantly... Um, repulse these things, get in Satan, use the scripture, rebuke him sharply. And so we're all oppressed, friends. There's no place we can go where we're free from oppression. Even in church, we are oppressed. It also says, go ahead now, disturbances of the mind. And Dis what? Disturbances in the mind or thought life, such as mental torment. All right. 
but caution should be taken not to class all illnesses or mental problems as being caused by demonic spirits. No. Sometimes a simple change in diet or lifestyle will eliminate a problem if it is caused by physical causes. Right, we're going to qualify that. Now, Charles Spurgeon said, I couldn't get it this year, but Mr. Spurgeon said, no, about it. He says, you, you will need much grace to conquer those corruptions which you have had take root in you. You have a tenant in your house, and it, will, and it will be hard to evict him. Only a stronger than he can cast him out. And to your dying day, the recollection of evil things which you have heard during your years of, of unregeneracy will stick to you. Hard to shake him. Until your dying day, he goes on to say now, you will hear the echoes of an old lascivious song just when you're trying to pray. And some deed which you, which you have, which you regret and mourn over will come and check you just when you're about to say, Abba Father. Demonic oppression, friends. Can't shake it. It's all around us. And that's why we are told in James chapter 5, verse 7, that when we are oppressed, we are told, the Bible says, submit yourselves to God, therefore, and resist the devil firmly, and he will flee from you. And so we are all oppressed, brothers and sisters. Now, question number three. Now, what is demonic possession? If we were to summarize it biblically, what is it? Now fill it in now. We're told. The Bible says again, it is real that we're possessed with devils. Jesus, right? Now fill it in now. Demonic possession is simple now. is when an individual, follow me now, has lost, fill it in now, his or own, her, his or her will. In relation to the influence of Satan in certain areas of life. Follow me now. It is a condition in which one or more evil spirits, demons, inhabit the body of the human being and take complete control of the victim's will. Get it now. This is the punchline now. This does not mean that the individual is void of moral values or that he or she is unable to function in society. You got to get that, friends, because I'm going to show you next week. Our week after next, we have community next Sabbath. But it is where the will is lost to Satan. But it does not mean you can't hold a job. You can't drive on a turnpike. You can't count money. You can't enter data or have conversation. But in a certain area of your life, you have no control over that area. Now let me qualify now. When we talk about the will, what are we making reference to? Thank you. The power of choice. That is the will. And, I, and I, we say, friends, next to Jesus Christ, the second greatest gift that God has bestowed upon mankind individually is the power of choice. Friends, I thank God for it. Because in spite of what is taking place in our churches, I choose differently. And you can't hold me accountable for what the world church is doing. You can't hold me accountable for what the conference is doing, friends. Because I do not identify myself theologically with that. I choose to exercise my power of choice to align myself with what the Bible teaches, friends. If the husband chose to go rogue, the wife can choose to stay central. We thank God for that, friends. I'm telling you, and as we near the end of time, you don't understand how powerful the will is. If you can will it, you can conceive it. I believe it. 
Here are some texts that you want to jot down. The prophet will know. Joshua 24, 15. Write it down. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve. The power of the will. You choose. I can't choose for you. It is yours to exercise. You're going to serve God or serve other gods, right? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. Moses' last sermon before he, before he died, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before thee life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life, that both, both you and your seed may live. Friends, no one liveth unto themselves. The choices we make impact our household. This is the will being exercised. I can choose for you. I can suggest, but again, it rests with you, the power of the will. Now, one more reference, not in your hand, but you can jot this down, right? We are told in Desire of Ages, right? She says, you write this reference down, please, right? She says, the tempter can never compel us to do evil this is important for us he can't compel he can suggest but he can't force you she says he cannot control minds unless they are yielded to his control then this is possession now the will must give consent faith must let go its hold upon christ before satan can exercise his power over us. So people say, you know, man, if, if, if I hang around a demon person, he'll jump. I mean, that's nonsense. Demons don't jump on people like that. You are possessed when you give your will. You venture on Satan's enchanted ground, which is by choice. And then now he can exercise his power over you. That is demonic possession, where you, you, have, you have no control. You find yourself just drifting like a, like, like a boat on a sea to that which you should not drift to. And that's why when Christ came to earth, John 3.16 is embodied in this. This is in your handout. Now we're told in this of age, she says, Now Jesus came to dispel the demons that had controlled the will, the power of choice. That is demonic possession. Your will, your power of choice is held in check by another power. Then she says now, this is in your handout, Ministry of Healing. She says now, many, many tamper with evil, thinking that he can break away at pleasure. But he's lured on and on until he finds himself controlled by a will stronger than his own. He can't escape its mysterious power. Secret sins or master passions may hold him captive as helpless as was the demoniac of Capernaum. Over and over the will is held in check by a will stronger than yours. That is demonic possession. Now. Then she says this one. Now, this is serious now. This is in Signs of the Times, um, third, fourth paragraph on, on, on second page, right? She says now, the will becomes enslaved. Bound to pursue a course which the word of God cannot justify. As a result now, reason is enfeebled, weak and sickly. The power to distinguish between right and wrong is lost. Sacred and eternal realities are estimated as of less value than gold, silver, houses, lands, bank, and stock. You see the, you see the, the degradation now. Then she says now, the love of God fades from the mind, and the captive in the tempter's power live on, having no hope without, and without God in the world, because they can not behold the Lamb of God. Sin can triumph only by enslaving the mind. Christ came to our world to break 
the power of Satan to emancipate the will of man. Jesus, thank you. That's the punchline. That's what it is. Nothing more than your will is held in subjection to another will. Stronger. And where I'm from, the weaker can never overcome the stronger. In a battle, in a clash, the strongest will win. Are you with me? Now, this one, you need, you need to write it down now again. This is from the Zara of Ages, and this is from the man of, um, in the temple, Luke 4. We'll cover that later on, right? The Zara of Ages, page 255. Write it down along with the text now. She says now, the demoniac partially comprehend. Remember, just because you're possessed doesn't mean that you're devoid of reasoning. The demo not in your handout, though, right? She says, the demoniac partially comprehended that he was in the presence of one who could set him free. This was when Christ was in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And the man cried out, let us alone. She says now, but when he tried to come within reach of the mighty hand, another's will held him. The devil or the demon. Another's words found utterance through him. Demonic possession. You can choose. And I hear people say, I can't help myself. I believe it. I could help myself. And we think that they're making us true. They really can't. They really can't help themselves. And that's why you, now, now you can understand in Romans chapter 7, where we've all been there. He says in Romans 7 verse 19, For the good that I would do not, but the evil which I, which I would, I, that I do. The things I don't want to eat, I find myself eating. Things I shouldn't put on, I find myself putting on. Things I shouldn't paint on, I find myself painting on. Places where I shouldn't go, I find my place you know, going. Then he says now, but I see another law in my members, warned against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity. This is a man who is struggling. Demonic battle. Then he says now, he says, oh, wretched man. Who shall deliver me? He's almost about to give up. There's no power on earth. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? And then he says now, but I thank God that the solution lies in Jesus, friends. That's the hope. The only hope for demonic possession rests in Jesus, brothers and sisters. Watch it now. And so that man is caught in a trap like a rat. Can't move. That area of that person's life, he has no control over it. And that's why we are told, you who teach the people, lift up Jesus as the only remedy for the sin-sick soul, friends. Our only hope lies in Jesus. Now, as I'm assessing this thing, a thought came to my mind, and I tried to craft a question. Question number four says now, why was demonic possession so lightly mentioned in the Old Testament as opposed to new. You know, the, the Old Testament from Genesis to Ma Malachi in the old, we seriously hear any mention of demons. I mean, Moses wrote f five books and we never hear Moses mention demons and we read about these great prophets, but they, we never see them casting out demons. I'm not saying they didn't do it, but it's seriously mentioned. But when we go into the new, Lord have mercy. Like, where have you guys been? On a vacation or a furlough? And then I found this reference, and it, it, it puts things into context now. We are told in Great Converse, she says now, please read now, the Old Testament. Old Testament history presents occasional mention of their existence and agency. Uh -huh. But it was during the time when Christ was upon the earth that evil spirits manifested their power in the most striking manner. Uh-huh. Christ had come to enter upon the plan devised for man's redemption, and Satan determined to assert his right to control the world. That is why. And friends, as we see the plan of salvation coming to its close, as it was in the beginning, 
we are seeing now an insurgency of demonic activities. We hear about, we covered them last week, suicide, homicide, padricide, infanticide. It's, it's, it's ramping. And it seems that the world is oblivious and the church is not too far behind. Okay, Sister Foot, we need a mic. No, hold on, you need a mic. Help us out there, um, Elder or Nathan. Give her that mic, please, all right? Is it a question or a comment? A right, question, go ahead. All right. Yes, um, when it comes to the Old Testament, I think that most of the Old Testament attributes what we, I would think of as demon possession as giving it to God because they would say God, say for instance, Saul, they would put it, as if so and god left him and god put, and it mm -hmm. but when you when you read of it and assess the whole thing it, it would be a demonic force mm -hmm. and i don't think god will put a demonic force on you it's you would have to make yourself available yes yes to be so i think of the whole testament it is written in a sense that um demonic possession is 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 attributed mostly as if god did it yes but not so much Satanist. Yes, in the, like in the New Testament now, it is more Probably. plainer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's, it's always there. It's always there. If you read between the line, Jezebel had a demon, right? All right, Sister Um Esther has Um. We, we need a mic. Ella, help us out, please. Oh, sorry. Let me give you this mic because you know folks are online and we do want them to to be benefited by your um. Do you think it's because Satan was so confident that Christ was not going to be able to come because he was going to correct the lineage mm -hmm. to make sure that there was no possibility? But then when he saw that Christ was able to incarnate himself, he realized, okay, the, the choice, you know, is here. I had to, because in the Old Testament, he was dealing so wickedly with God's people that there was no hope that yeah. Christ was going to make it. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And you know what? Through the Old Testament, I mean, you know, we look at, you know, Israel was always disobedient. And so why possess them if they're disobedient? You know what I'm saying? They're always in captivity. But demons influence kings, demons, the presence was there, but not so prominent. Exactly. And I believe that because, again, the plan of salvation wasn't implemented yet. But once the clock started to tick, he was in a mad rush to kind of thwart the plan of salvation. Right? But excellent point, right? All right. Now. Now, now this is where it gets technical now. And I'm trying to make this as very practical as we can now. Question five now. Is it possible to recognize demonic possession from a mere medical condition? If so, then how? Because friends, you know, ever since we've, we've started to, to teach on this, and it's been, it's been a year now I'm doing it, you know, since about 12, we've started the series. Um, friends, if, 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 if I got a dollar for every phone call I got, I would be a millionaire. And people call me all the time. If it's not Messenger, it's WhatsApp. If it's not WhatsApp, it's email. And, and, and they call me and they say, Pastor, not we were referred to you by so and so. And we hear this and I, I, I think I have a demon and I, I think there's some paranormal activity in my house. Can you help? Can we fly you up? Can you listen to my cases? And, and friends, you, you get so overwhelmed. And these are real people with real cases. And they feel like this is, this is their last hope. Can I magically say abracadabra? Can I just speak the word? And voila. And so over the years now, I have been challenged, you know, you know, when people call me, my mind begins to start to think now, is, is it medical or is it mental? Meaning, it's in your mind. You know, Ellen White says many die from diseases wholly imaginary. Right? Or is it, is it, is it a lifestyle? Is it just purely lifestyle? Or, or is, it, is it really demonic? And so when you're placed in a position now, when you're confronted, you have to now begin into critical thinking mode. Is this a medical condition? Do you really need to go and see a doctor? 
My gums begin to bleed. Is it demonic? You need to go see a doctor. If you ask me. Take yourself to the doctor. Get a blood check. Right? It may be not demonic. It may be just be medical. Right? All right. Uh, uh, Ali has a question. Um, Nathan, can I help your sister out, right? Give her, right? You could probably be my, my little rabbit today, right? All right. So on the topic of like medical things, do you think sleeping paralysis is a form of demon like activity? All right. Good question. I'm going to cover that week after next. Sleeping paralysis. But let me just say this. Um, I do believe that it is, it can be demonic. And I've always tell the story. Um, I went to Best Buy one time and I, I knew, friends, I shouldn't do this. But I rationalized. I'm walking through the DVD aisle and I saw the movie Gladiator by Russell Crowe. And I took up a DVD and it said rated R, violence. And I began to rationalize. Well, it's about, it's about Rome. And you know, Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, Rome, and prophecy. And so maybe it's prophetic. I began to rationalize. Bought the DVD, took it home. Put it in my DVD player. My wife had went to bed. And midway, I'm like, man, this is so spiritualism. Because, you know, in the movie, his wife died. And, and she's calling him. And she appears. And she's saying, come. And he wants to go through the door. And I'm like, this is spiritualism. I shut it off, went to bed, sister base. About 20 minutes, bam, some helmet down in the bed. My wife is sleeping and snoring, and I'm like, I'm like, babe, nuts, nuts. And he's like, oh, Lord, I'm going to die now. And it, it's so frightening. It is like, I'm, it is the worst feeling ever. And I'm like, just, just take me. And then I began to say, J -j -j Jesus, and it bounced off. And I'm like, you know, I said, and I fell on my knees, and the Holy Ghost said, it ain't time to pray. It's that DVD you brought in the house. Clear as day. I went, took the DVD, broke it in a thousand pieces, went to the, sh the sh trash chute, and threw it down the chute. Went to bed, never happened again. And I'm going to tell you something. It happens to me now and then. But I know it always happens. Sometimes when you're watching stuff, you shouldn't watch. That's what we are told. Before you go to your bed, the last thing you should do is not go on Facebook. Commit your souls to God and ask God for a good, nice rest and sweet and pleasant dreams. But I, I, I would jump in the gun. I'm telling you, it is demonic. And it is very scary. You don't want, if it hasn't happened to you, praise God. But you do not want to undergo it. You feel them holding you down. And you, you, you're, you're numb. And sometimes God allows it. Because we think this is a game. You really think this is like hopscotch or double dodge. And sometimes he backs up and says, you see what will happen if I'm not with you? But it is demonic. It is straight out of demon, right? Again, is it mental? Maybe it's, maybe it's your mind. There's a song that came out a couple year, years ago. Dun, 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 dun. My mind playing tricks on me. And then why says most of the diseases people die from is wholly imaginary. They ain't got nothing to do with no demon. It's in your mind. It may be a case where it's lifestyle. Listen, you can't be eating them dumpling. 12 o'clock at night, and yellow yam, uh, and beef. That stuff don't digest, man. That stuff give you a nightmare, man. It may be a case where the person needs to adjust their lifestyle, their liberty, and then the problem will go away. But it may be a case where, listen, sis, you got a demon. Oh, yes, this is straightly demonic it ain't no medical it ain't no mental it ain't no lifestyle you have a demon that is demonic but again how do we know because number one we don't want to misdiagnose people and, and, and so how can we how do we know when, when a person calls me 
How many want? Well, I probably shouldn't see it because probably they're watching. But how do you know? How do you know that this is this is really a demon? Because half the folks I speak to, I don't know them. We're over the phone. And you know, I you have to listen patiently. And sometimes I'm jotting notes down and you begin to go into, you know, coaching mode. You're asking them questions, trying to draw out things, and and all you can do is just pray a prayer. And, you know, maybe give them directives to close the door or, you know what I'm saying, or, or eliminate certain stuff and give them to God. But that, that, that's, the, that's the extent of it. But how do we know, Sister Bates, when we're really dealing with a demonic attack? Now, I'm going to give you three texts, four texts of Scripture. And these texts is the answer. All right? 1 Corinthians 2.10. 1 Corinthians 2.14, 1 Corinthians 12.10, and Revelation 3, verse 14 through 17. Now, if, if we have embodied these texts, we can know. Right? It's right there. You can tell right? if we, if we If we have embodied these texts, in other words, if these texts are in us, a part of us, it would not be hard to differentiate whether the case is medical, whether it's mental, whether it's a lifestyle or whether it is straight out of demon. So I'm going to read these texts of scriptures and we're going to see, we're going to do a little some case study and we'll let you go, um, we'll, we'll go, go have lunch, right? All right, do we have them? I'm going, to, I'm going to quote them so you'll find them right now. All right, now, this is the answer now. 1 Corinthians 2.10, are we there? Paul says now, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Watch it now. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So the Holy Ghost already knows whether it is medical, mental, lifestyle, or demonic. He knows the answer because the, the text says he searches all things. That's, that's imperative. So we must have the Holy Ghost. Amen, kind of weak. We have to have the Holy Spirit. There's no way you can diagnose any condition without the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost, he sees the deep things of God. That's the first key. Now, second text. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Paul says now, but the natural man, watch it now, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are what? Discern. 15 says, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Meaning, he doesn't condemn any man. Verse 4 says now, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of? Whoa, that's, that, that's, that's, that's loaded. So we have to realize that this is a spiritual matter we are engaged in. It's not secular. Scientists and secular psychologists is out of their realm. It's a spiritual. So if you are secular, you cannot diagnose this. You have to be a spiritual person to believe that these things are real as those on your face. The second thing, this is a spiritual matter. Highly spiritual, not secular. Now, verse 10, verse 16 says now, but we have the mind of Christ. Friends, we have to have the mind of Christ. Paul says, let this mind, let this conscious be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. So if you have the mind of Christ, you will think what Christ is thinking. Now, let me give you an analogy. Jot it down now. In creation, Adam, it's amazing, Adam had the mind of Christ. You believe me? And it's amazing that in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says everything God had made, it was good. It was good. Good. Very good. God created the animals on day 6 with mankind. But it was Adam who named the animals. You'll find a reference, jot it down in Pish on Prophet, 
page 45. She says, after creation, <clears throat> pardon me, of Adam, every living creature was bought, brought before him to receive its name. Now, look at it now. So, the vast array of animals, lizards and birds and everything. Adam, and, and, and you never find a dialogue where Adam said, okay, I'm going to call that one a giraffe. And God said, come on, Adam. And a giraffe, that. That's not a giraffe. That's a, that, that, that's a zebra. That's a lion. You don't find that, 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 that back and forth because he had the mind of Christ. So when he called it a lion, God said, boy, you go my boy. That's my mind. Everything Adam named, God signed off because he was connected. So let's go back to my chart now, right? If if you are, if you are, if you are connected now, right, to God, if it's medical, it is medical. If it's lifestyle, it is lifestyle. If it's demonic, you're not going to say, sister, it's demonic. But tomorrow, you know what I mean, I think, you know, based on what you say, well, I'm a thinker lifestyle, you know. But then again, boy, it sounds like a medical something, you know. And you, no, 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 you don't have time to go back and forth. There's no wavering. You, you are diagnosed because you have the mind of Christ. And the reason why so few people are delivered, friends, because, friends, our minds is not connected to the Christ. It's connected on Sabbath, and we have a short circuit on, on Sunday. We plug it out. Come, come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. You plug it back in. So there's a shortage, but we don't have a consistency. We have to have the mind of Christ, and that is why so few people get delivered in our churches. Because as a church, since we are not connected to the Wi-Fi, and you know how it is, brothers and sisters. You go on vacation, if they ain't got no Wi-Fi, eyes ain't going. Can't go to that villa, even though you have mountains and rivers and, and fruits, vegetables in abundance, no Wi-Fi, no casa. Huh? It could be a house in Arizona in the desert where all you see is tumbleweed, hot like hell. They got Wi-Fi, sign me up. <laughs> That's how fickle we have become, brothers and sisters. The mind must be, we must have the mind of Christ. Right? Now, Fourth thing now we must have, is in, and these are texts now, Paul speaks of the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. And he says in verse, 1 Corinthians 12, 10 now, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discerning of spirits. Now let me tell you something. In these last days, I may not be able to work miracles or tongues, but I covet the discerning of spirit. I, I, discern, I need that one. I need the discerning of spirit. We need that one. If there's one gift that you cannot afford, that you need the discerning of spirit. Friends, um, if we had that, few, two marriages would end in divorce. Okay, you wouldn't marry in the first place. Discerning of spirit. You have a question? All right, sister um, Nathan, where are you? All right. We need the discerning of spirit. It's not on. Go on it. All right, it's on now. Hello. All right. I just want to call the attention uh -huh. that. Oh, hold on. If something happened, it's chipped out. It's off? All right. Just wait, please wait for another mic because, again, folks are online. We do want them to be benefited by your comment, right? All right. It will be quick. I just would like to call the attention that you don't depend on your cell phone at three o'clock in the morning. Because when I was in the Philippines, I was trying to send a message of condolence to my friend here in America. And the devil's face uh, came out on my cell phone. I turned it off right away and I started praying. In not even an hour, a group of men were trying they already reached the third floor to enter the house. 
and their mindset is to hurt me or, you know, steal or whatever. So the following morning, I went to my cousin's house. They hot wired the windows, floodlights and the building. We have a three story building in the Philippines. Um, we're doing soup kitchen there. So I was telling my cousin they're coming back the, the following night mm -hmm. and it's a Friday night. And as I said, they were already um, having a good time. This group of young people, mm -hmm. they're waiting for the reinforcement to go back in the building. And God and his benevolence, I don't know the heaven opened and just like angry rain just came down. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were driven away. The following uh, morning, Sabbath, I went to church and after church, until now I have goosebumps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after church, the, the brethren were saying, where did that rain came, came from last night? Why was it so angry? God and his benevolence saved me. Amen. <clears throat> praise God, praise God. And so friends, we need, discern, we need this gift so you can discern, right? And then now Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 and 17, the last church. Now, this is the last place of Christianity. John says, unto the church of Laodiceans, write these things, the amen, the faithful and the true witness. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increasing good, nothing. You don't know that you're wretched, miserable, poor, naked and what? Blind. When a man, he can't see. You can't see, you can't, you can't see the real, the real deal. Then Jesus says, now I counsel thee to buy of, anoint your eye with what? Eye solves that we might see. We need all of it. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the mind of Christ. We need spiritual discernment. And we also need eye solves. The answer is now, so through spiritual, through the discernment of spirits, or through spiritual discernment now, we are able to know the case at hand. There's no other way, friends. There is no other way. And friends, again, if we are connected to Jesus Christ, he will let us know the case in which we're dealing with is demonic. I can, I, 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 just thinking, you know, I, I remember we were working out of out, out the country as, as missionaries at, at a certain academy, and all the teachers assembled under the gazebo. And... Out of the blues, one of the co-workers, educated lady, very, very fair lady, master's degree, just fainted on the floor. And the co-workers was carrying on like, I'm like, and they say, oh, it's natural. I'm like, no, it's not natural. That's unnatural. Long story was a demon. Kid you not. So again, if we are connected brothers and sisters, if we have the Holy Spirit, if we are spiritual people, yes, if we have the spirit of discernment and if we have the eye saws, we will know what we're dealing with, friends. We don't have time to misdiagnose people, right? I see a hand over there, Sister um, Chambers, right? Nathan, go over there, right? Thank you, right? So, you now while you're going, look what she says. Now she says, their spiritual discernment is what? Is dim. That's why they can't discern it. Very dim. All right, go ahead, Sister Chambers. Campbell. Mercy. So, um, funny that you say that. We have a church in Jamaica. It's a Seventh-day Adventist church. Every Tuesday we fast and pray. Um, a few here can attest to it. And where I come from in the faith as a young believer, we, we could hear the demons speaking out of the persons daily from all over the world come to that church. Mm. It's a Seventh-day Adventist church in Constitution Hill, which I'm a part of, really, from way back then. We do fast and pray there on Tuesdays. But um, as saying this, I was speaking to the elder day before yesterday. We were having, he was praying with me because he prays with me after each case. Because when cases come to us, they come with every spirit pastor. Mercy. So you have to pray. And there's times when I just need to be lifted in prayer. Yes. So we were talking and he was saying to me that we are living in serious days because the doctors in Jamaica now are telling them that the people are sending people away. So you don't seek. You're loaded with demons. So we know that the demons are unleashed today more than anything else. And it's just something that we as God's people have to learn mm -hmm. how to commit ourselves and to give ourselves to God that we can be used by him because we have no power of our own. None. So demons are taking over people all around us. Oh, yes. 
And bear in mind, we don't want to jump the gun, but in, we'll learn in the next segment that, that casting out demons is not just for the elders. It's for the whole church. It's part of the commission. He didn't just choose 12 youth. No, all of us, if we're placed in a, in a situation, should be able to do what Jesus did. You have a question? Okay, you need a mic. Just raise your hand, please. All right. I'm saying, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. I'm saying it, so a lot of people don't believe in the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. So if the people don't believe in the Spirit or they're not being taught, then how are they going to even know that? Because some churches don't, I mean, the Adventist church don't believe in the Holy Spirit or the manifestation of the Holy Spirit or even speaking in tongues. So is that going to happen? All right. So but again, if we don't believe in the Holy Ghost, then, then we, we, we disqualify. It's no use. And so many people are just, just, just hopeless while we should be like, right? Then we're told also, she says, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Without the spiritual discernment, you will um, be able to see. So we need it, friends. We need it. Right? No, please read now. Right? To discern. To discern means to discover, evaluate, and make a distinction between. Uh-huh. The gift of discerning of spirits enables a believer to discern the spirits operating in others. Huh? It permits him to discover, evaluate, and identify evil spirits. Right. The gift of discerning of spirits is very important when dealing with demonic powers. Huh. It enables you to immediately discern whether or not a person has an evil spirit operating <laughs> through or against him or his case has been brought on by poor lifestyle choices. So you will know. You will know. All right? Please read now. For example. Some deafness and dumbness, according to the biblical record, is caused by a spirit. Other deafness and dumbness might be the result of an accident or illness. Huh? Discernment would enable you to determine the cause behind the condition, which would enable specific ministry. All right. Let me give you a scenario. I... We worked in the special ed field for a while, and um, autistic, aut autistic children in, in specific. And there was one particular child, he was cerebral and autistic, meaning they, they were twins, so he came out last, the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck, no oxygen, so he's in a wheelchair. And I, and, and, and I thought to myself, just thinking, you know, to myself, I wonder if it's really demonic or whether it's medical but i kept it myself i didn't want to tell the parents you know i think you know, they, you know I, I, this ain't no medical this is you know i get myself in trouble my point is friends we have to be able to differentiate and again this is where having the mind of christ comes this is where we're living embodying what we believe friends we as as adam called what it is it is what it is all right so let's go into some case studies now. we're going to do some case studies and we're going to determine whether, if, whether this was natural or demonic. Now, this is Christ right now. First case that we have, this Seraphonician woman. Her case is in, all right, go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to say with regard to you saying that some um, evil spirits are caused by deafness and dumbness. I know of a situation, somebody that I know personal, she has a five-year-old son that he is dumb. He cannot talk. Mm -hmm. And um, this other Christian, she's not a Seventh-day Adventist, but she belongs to another church, Sunday church. We um, recommended to her to pray for her because both of us felt that it was, it had something to, to do with uh, evil spirit. Yeah. You know, but she, she declined. But we discerned that it's a result of an evil spirit or demon possession because he's five years old and he cannot talk. Oh, and, and you're right. Now, the Seraphonician woman. So we're going to check. You will, you know, based on the observation, you will deduce whether it is demonic or natural. Now, Seraphonician means that she was what? Was she Israelite? Heathen, right? So her case is in Matthew 15. And the Bible says now, And behold, a certain woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a what? Now, I've always wondered, she, how did she know? I mean, she's a heathen. Now, God loves everybody. 
But how did she know that this particular case was demonic? You know, some parents, we're living in, in denial, you know. You know, you know, we even, we, you know, we're, we're Adventists and you are present truther, you know, conservative. And you don't want to be told that your son have a devil because it may reflect on you. And so we go in denial. It's just teenager rage. It's just, he'll grow out of it. It's just a fad or a phase they're going through. And we're living in denial. But not this woman. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. She called it what it was. Now this is the mind of Christ now. The story goes on and she's going back and forth and Christ testing her faith. And finally, she's so persistent. She's not changing, it's not medical, or it's a devil, it's a devil, it's a devil. And finally in verse 30, 20, Jesus says now, Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee as thou wilt. And the Bible says now, And her daughter was made whole from that same. So her ma Christ knew it was a devil. She diagnosed it correctly. She had great faith. She believed that deliverance was only in Jesus. Go back to my chart. So was this natural or was it demonic? It was, it was demonic. She called it, she called an ace, an ace, and a spade, a spade. And she began to act upon that. It's one to, 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 to diagnose it and say, well, hopefully you'll find your way. You see, faith without works is dead. Oftentimes we, we say, Lord, save my brother, save my mother. But what are you doing to bring your prayers a reality? Have you given him a book? Have you given him a word? Are you acting out your faith? Practically. This was a demonic case. Now, if it was purely medical, they would say, well, look, give the child some Ridley. This is what the doctors would say today. Let me give you a prescription. And persuade you that it's something's not it. But not her. It's not medical. I don't need no I need Dr. Jesus. It is straight a demon because she was able to understand. Now I don't know what her lifestyle was like or what though, but this mother no, this ain't normal. This is not normal. All right. We're told now. Okay, you could pipe back past that. All right. One more case study. A man born blind. We find his mind. Right? The Bible says now. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was born blind from his birth. His disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, said, Neither this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Natural or demonic? It was natural. And you know, this is important because, again, you will find people who are, you know, blind. And, and you don't want to say it's a demon. But, you know, it's, and, 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 and in some cases, God will, it, 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 the Lord, it's the Lord's will. It's the Lord's will that this person should be born blind. To be a witness to other blind people. That here's a man who didn't have no sight, but he had vision. He saw me. So you are without excuse, blind person. Oh, Lord, I was born blind, so I couldn't see. I'm disadvantaged. It's not fair in the judgment of God. Why you make me blind, but he can see. But here's a person who was born blind. That the works of God may be manifested, right? Not every person who is blind is of a demonic attributed, right? All right. We're told, we're told in Zavage, please read that the Jews are so warped. He says that it was generally? It was generally believed by the Jews that sin is punished in this life. Uh -huh. Every affliction was regarded as the penalty of some wrongdoing, either of the sufferer himself or of his parents. Uh -huh. The belief of the Jews in regard to the relation of sin and suffering was held by Christ's disciples. While Jesus corrected their error, he did not explain the cause of the man's affliction, but told them what would be the result. There it is. It was natural. All right, one more case study now. The woman with infirmity. 
you find her case in Luke 13. Right? The Bible says now, Luke 13, all right? And he was teaching in one of their synagogues on the Sabbath. You know, this is important, friends. You know, Jesus loved the synagogues. And friends, you know, there, 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 are, there are ministries now that are, have arisen that are discouraging people from attending conference churches. If you go there, you'll be contaminated. That's not true, friends. Jesus was always in the synagogue on the Sabbath. Now, he didn't spend there, there, all, it wasn't there all day, but he left us an example. And I go to church. Even when I'm not preaching, I go to church because I love church. And Jesus would have his people be in church on the Sabbath. Now, and behold, there was a woman with a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could not lift up herself. 18 years. So think about it now. For 18 years, that tells me from deductive reasoning that before the 18 year hit, she was fine. You see that? So somewhere along the line now, the back started to bend. And it bent till she could no longer lift up. Look at it now. And when Jesus saw her, he called unto, unto him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Deliverance. Now look at verse 16 now. This is, this is a clincher now. And are not, the, the Pharisees got upset because you healed the woman on the Sabbath. Right? He says, now, and are not this woman being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound? Lo, loose these 18, be loosed. Her cause, now if you're a medical doctor, you would have said, sis, you know what I'm to you? The spine are bending up. And so you need back surgery. And we have Medicaid, that's not going to work. You know. We need other insurance. And, and insurance after insurance. And you would have diagnosed her, misdiagnosed her. Because in a spiritual. You have to go to this back specialist and wear this back cast. And we're going to put a stent in your back and a, and a steel. And we can fix it. But this was not a medical case. So, what do you think it was? It was demon. This was straight out of demon. For Satan bound her for 18 years. And so many people have deformities. And doctors and you have physical therapists. They don't have a ghost of a clue. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And I believe that what God did for this woman, he wants to use you and I to do for many others. Signs and wonders, the Bible says, will follow the believers. Friends, I'm praying for that. Since I'm really praying that signs and wonders will follow my ministry. That I can say to the, be, to the dead, come back to life in Jesus' name. It can, and it will happen, we're told. All right? Now, or you can read that one in your leisure, right? All right, one more now. Another, a man that was born, another blind man. Now the man born blind, look at it now. We find different from the one in Luke. He's the one in Matthew 12, 22. The Bible says now, look at this man now. He's blind. Bible says now. Then was brought unto him one, not oppressed, but possessed with a devil. Blind and woo. And he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb spake and saw. This was not like the man in, in, in Luke. This was not, he wasn't born blind. Now, what do you think it was? It was demonic. So many people today, the, the demon had suppressed the optical nerve. Man couldn't see. And I'm believing at some point in his life he could have seen. Could have seen. Is that good English? Could have saw. That's bad grammar. Nurse, get in Satan, right? That's demon oppression. <laughs> right? Yeah. So at some point in his life, he had sight. But over the years, and I'm going to show you how demons possess people in the next segment. 
We don't know what he did. But all I know, a will was stronger than his will. Took possession of his will. And the optical nerve became more suppressed, suppressed, suppressed. And the speech nerve. That's a double whammy. Dumb and blind. Lord have mercy. He could not speak. You, you need to hold on there. Nathan, we have an um, sister, Esther, want to say something, right? So his was purely demonic. And Christ didn't, didn't say, you know what, brother, I think your problem you have now is medical. Go to the doctor. No, he called it what it was. So when I look at Lido's, Lido say, Lido say, uh, Lido say at the church in which we are, yeah. Jesus uh, diagnosed us as blind. Yes. This is the demon possession, right? Satan has blinded our eyes that we cannot see, especially. Of course, of course. But are we also yes. contaminated with the spirit of dumb because we cannot preach the truth? Yes. You're going on some deep waters now. Flesh and blood didn't reveal that one to you. I believe you're on to something. It's true. We are, we are mute as a church boy. And we sanction the wrong people then. Those who are preaching the truth, we, we gag order. Those who ain't saying nothing, come on in. A spirit of dumbness, you're right. I need to put that one in. And cold sister Esther, blindness has taken over the church. You're right. Can't see. But his case was strictly. And so it lends, it lends a person that there are people in the world today who are blind, not because of birth defect, but because they have played with devil and the demon took control of them. And for some of them, there's no hope outside of Jesus. And, 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 and list, and let, until they meet the real McCoy, someone who knows somebody who knows somebody. Very sad. And I've oftentimes said, saints, if you get possessed by a demon, God help you. Because in this church, our casting out rate is very, very thin. Our deliverance rate is very, very thin. Very thin. All right? One more case now. All right, this, this is serious now. Another case, a certain dam possessed damsel. Now, this one is in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 16, right? We want to see if it's natural or demonic. And there's a word that, there's a word that we call it today. I'm going to tell you what we call it. The medical word they would call this woman. All right. Acts 16 now. And it came to Paul and Silas, the context now. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, pray, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of what divination today what would you call it psychic but we have another word for it a fanciful word no it's medical extra sen extra extra sensory perception oh yes that's what they did diagnose it extra sens esp Extra sensory perception. Um, Ella Hoffman. Yeah, it's, it, it is. It, it, precisely. Oh, you have ESP. Oh, I'm special. Ella Hoffman, before he passed, he told a story. He had adopted a daughter. Now, he himself was very, very intelligent. He went to MIT. And he said that his daughter could take a deck of cards and could just reel off numbers. Like, she would turn the card to her, jack a spade, two of diamonds. The whole deck without seeing it. It got to a point where they wanted to study her because they said, this girl has ESP. He, being a preacher, realized, no, they know that's a demon. There ain't no ESP. You ain't got no special gift where you can. God don't work like that. And so we, we would call her today, oh, she can tell the future. Oh, she, she is special. Let's make her a case study. ESP, look it up. Yeah, Rain Man. Rain, Rain Man with Rain Man was the same case. Tom Cruise and um, Dustin Hoffman. Exactly, same case. He was kind of special, but he was special. So they would diagnose her. That's the medical condition today, right? And he, she brought her master much gain through it. Write it now, right? Oh, 
And the same followed Paul and Christ, saying, These are the men of the servants of God, of the Most High, and they show us signs and salvation. Wow! And this she did many days. But watch it now. But Paul, being grieved and turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of our Lord Jesus, come out of her. And she came out the same hour. Paul recognized there is no ESP. This is strictly demonic. In the book Acts of the Apostles, please read now as we wind up. Ellen White comments and she says now, please read now. As the messengers of the cross went about their work of teaching, a woman possessed of a spirit of divination followed them, uh -huh. crying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, uh -huh. which show unto us the way of salvation. Uh -huh. And this did she many days. Right. This woman was a special agent of Satan and had brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Her influence had helped to strengthen idolatry. Satan knew that his kingdom was being invaded, and he resorted to this means of opposing the work of God, hoping to mingle his sophistry with the truths taught by those who were proclaiming the gospel message. You know, it's almost like a dichotomy because in the text, the text says she had a spirit of divination, and then in the same voice she's saying, that these men are the servants of the Most High, work with them. Now from this we learn that Christ does nothing in partnership with Satan. You see right there, nothing. Right? So her case, you can, what do you think it was? Well, we know what it was. It was demonic, all right? Yeah, it was, it was not natural, this was demonic. Now, I'm going to give you one more and we're going to close. Now, this one is um, a little bit controversial. But I'm going to let you draw your own conclusion from this. We live in a world today where the LGBT movement has hijacked society. It's, it, it, it is the norm now. You got to be very careful what you say. Talk within your mind. Can't condemn anybody. You lose your job. It's the norm. Now, one more case study now. Mary Magdalene, a case study. All right? In the book of Luke, we find this as we wind down. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he should eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in a certain in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus was at meat in the Pharisee's house, she bought a box of, she brought an alabaster box with ointment. Skip on down now. All of a sudden now, Christ knew what it was. And he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. In that word is deliverance. Now, the, a woman in a certain city, that's a codified word. A certain city. It's almost like giving you her profession. Knew what she was. A city lady, what it was. Street walker. Oh, yeah? Watch it now. In Luke chapter 8, verse 2 now, the Bible says now, and a certain woman, same woman, certain woman, right? Right? Which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven Devils. Watch it now. Now, what was her profession? Prostitution. Her sexual orientation was skewed. And it was attributed by those seven devils. And friends, I believe them seven devils is still around today. Still possessing people. Still skewing people's orientation. He, she, he, man, she, man. You can't use these. No, you have to be careful. And it's everywhere. I was traveling. I went into the bathroom. And before I went, I saw, you know, normally you know by the sign. I saw the bathroom. It had half a skirt and half a pants. I said, what in the world is going on here? And I'm looking for an option. <laughs> like, 
Because I don't want to go in there and buck up on a she man. Or a he she. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, it really, I'm, I'm sitting there like, okay. <laughs> but let me just take my chance. And I actually, I actually went into a stool. And I locked the door. So if anybody come in, they couldn't scream. But this, this is where we are. This is the norm. I wonder what is behind that. I wonder if it is natural. Is it medical? Shh. Now, I'm going to read a quotation and you will diagnose it. This is half ages. It is so powerful. 36. Listen now as we close. Please read now. It says now the deception. The deception of sin had reached its height. Uh -huh. All the agencies for depraving the souls of men had been put in operation. Uh -huh. Mercy. Watch it now. The Son of God, looking upon the world, beheld suffering and misery. Mercy. With pity, he saw how men had become victims of satanic cruelty. This is prior to him coming to earth now. In a manger now. Please read now. He looked with compassion upon those who were being corrupted, murdered, and lost. Mm -hmm. They had chosen a ruler who chained them to his car as captives. Mercy. Bewildered and deceived, they were moving on in gloomy procession toward eternal ruin. Mm. To death in which is no hope of life. Mercy. Toward night to which comes no morning. Now bear in mind, when Christ came on the scene, we were living in a Greco-Roman society. And friends, I'm going to tell you something. The Romans were very promiscuous, very licentious. Almost all the senators had little boys they traveled with. Little boys, it, it, it was a very promiscuous society, Rome. Dr. Edward Gibbon said Rome had too much money, too much slave, too much leisure. And because of that, now that produced weak mind, weak moral, weak thinking. He said the nation, they began to put on female, feminine hairstyle and feminine clothes. And he said the nation of Rome became a nation of homosexuals. Now when Christ came on the scene, it's a Greco-Roman. Greece was coming off the scene, Rome is coming in. Now look what she says now. You got to get this. This is the punchline now. And tell me if you clock it now. Please read now. Satanic agencies were incorporated with men. Hey, watch it now. The bodies of human beings made for the dwelling place of God had become the habitation of demons. Here's a punchline now. Green words. The senses, the, the nerves, the passions, the organs of men were worked by supernatural agencies in the indulgence of the vilest Friends, lust. what do you think they were doing? Huh? But who was working it? Satanic. Agencies, friends. And nothing has changed. This stuff ain't natural. This stuff is straight out of demon. That's what it is. It's demonic. It is, and it, it is really demonic. I see your hand, your sister foot, right? Um, please read as we, uh, go ahead, uh, while you get the mic. Go ahead, um, the what? The very stamp of demons was impressed upon the countenances of men. Human faces reflected the expression of the legions of evil with which they were possessed. This sexual orientation and confusion, friends, I'm t I know to, you know, we're, we don't want to be political. We don't want to lose our jobs. We gotta be, I'm telling you, friends, I know what the origin is. It's not natural. It's not medical. It is demonic. Go ahead, Sister Foot. Um... I remember growing up in Jamaica, these two, this lady of the church, uh -huh. Seventh-day Adventist, she had a set of twins, a, a boy and girl. However, when she had the kids, as they grew up, we could see where the boy behaves like a girl mm -hmm. and the girl behaves like a boy. I mean, from they were down there. Yeah. Is it the mother or... Who, who do you blame? Because they're kids. They're, in, they're yeah. basically... All right. Innocent. I'm going to answer that question in the, in the next lesson because we're going to show you how people get possessed. I'm going to... Add, that, 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 that is in the... But in the, well, let me just say this in, in closing. When the children of Israel went to Canaan, they were forbidden to intermarry. Did you hear me? They were not 
to marry, mingle with the Canaanite men or women. Because you don't know what kind of lifestyle that person is engaged in. But I'm, we're, we're going to tackle that when we look at um, how people get possessed by demons, right? But just say that, right? But, I, but again, I'm just saying that, right? All right, go ahead, go ahead. Um, just in that vein of thought, when we go back and look at Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. we are told that she was taken advantage of, mm -hmm. right? right? She was abused. And there are times, I believe, in our you know, day and time where evil men and women do things to children and to adults, and the devil like sees that as an opening door now to come in and possess. Now you think because you have been violated, you have to turn to this lifestyle mm -hmm. where you allow others to continue to violate you. And so for those who have been traumatized, seek Jesus, yes. truly seek healing from Jesus, because whether through depression or you becoming criminal and perpetrating that, we can see how people, victims of abuse, can become possessed by devils and do evil. Excellent point, right? So we know what it was right now. As we close now, question number six. six. All right. If demonic possession is the controlling of the will by Satan, whom then should we give our wills to? You know, when we have valuables, what, where, where, where do we put them? Safe, safety deposit box, and even that they're, they're still not secure. People put their stuff in banks and banks, rob it, and, and they have no clue. But things that we prized, we tend to put it in safekeeping friends i'm telling you all we have in this world apart from jesus is our will and we need to protect it because if you ever allow that rascal to take hold of your will then may god have mercy on you we are told, please read now as we wind down. This is from Minister of Healing, a powerful book. He says now, The Tempted One. The Tempted One needs to understand the true force of the will. All right. This is the governing power in the nature of man. Uh huh. The power of decision, yes. of choice. Uh -huh. Everything depends on the right action of the will. <laughs> Desires for goodness and purity are right so far as they go. Uh huh. But if we stop there, they avail nothing. You see. Many will go down to ruin while hoping and desiring to overcome their evil propensities. Yes, it's more than hope. Mm. You have to will. Yes. She says, now they do not will to God. They do not yield their will to God. They do not now choose to serve him. God has given us the power of choice. It is ours to exercise. Yours and not mine. And these relationships where the, 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 the wife, the husband, lord over the wife, she gave, and vice versa. That's demonic. Please read, we cannot change our hearts. We cannot change our hearts. Uh -huh. We cannot control our thoughts, uh -huh. our impulses, our affections. We cannot make ourselves pure, oh. fit for God's service. What? But we can choose to serve God. It is. We can give him our will. Uh -huh. Then he will work in us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Lord, take my will. Take my power of choice, Lord. You choose for me, Lord. And he will. She says, through the right exercise of the will, the entire change may be made in life. By yielding up the will to Christ, we ally ourselves with divine power. We receive strength from above to hold us steadfast. Friends, we don't go bad. We are born bad. The will is already crooked. And when we give it to God now, he straightens it. He empowers it. And we can do and choose right. And the devil fears that. She says a pure, a noble life, a life of victory over appetite and lust is possible. To everyone who will unite his weak, wavering, human will to the omnipotent, unwavering will of God. We are told that when humanity takes hold of divinity, humanity does not sin. 
Everything depends upon the right action of the will. Friends, my appeal to you as you leave this place, guard jealousy, the will. You know, one of my favorite songs was written by one of the Wesley brothers, Charles Wesley. Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other. I know if thou withdraw thyself from thee, ah, whither shall I go? On thy dear son, I now, oh, let me feel thy power. And all my wearied ones relieved in this success day. Let us stand, please. Author of faith to. Come on, can I hear you now? We rely in eyes. Oh, let me now receive that gift. My soul without you. Ladies only. Male only. How would my fainting soul rejoice? Could I but see thy face? Now let me thy quickening voice and taste thy pot. All together now. I do believe, I now believe that Jesus died. For me, and that he shed his precious blood from sin to set me free. O oh God of mercy and compassion, didn't our hearts burn within us this morning, O oh Lord, as we saw the reality of the great controversy? O oh God, as we leave from this place, O oh God, we beseech thee, O oh God, to take our wills. Lord, we freely give it to you, O oh God, and may you take it and work out your good will within us. We know that this field is the devil's field, O oh Lord, and we are harassed and bombarded by demons night and day. But God, help us not to fall victim to their temptation. We pray for strength. We pray for grace. We pray for eye saws. We pray for discernment. We pray for the Holy Spirit, dear Father, so we can see things as they are in the light of eternity. Oh God, you have given to your church power over all demons, and we know not whom we will come in contact with. But may we so have the mind of Christ so we can speak things into existence as though they were. We thank you, Lord, for what we have learned today. And as we leave from this place to go back to our homes, may they not slip from our minds. Bring us here back at the point time, we pray in Jesus' name. And let the words of our mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat>